Yeah. Actually got all of the uh, the twelfth grade year recorded. Yeah. Uh -huh. Absolutely. When you when you're doing the tests and so forth, you write all over them. In fact, it's it was tough because I always like to have one fresh, clean one, um, and Miss Holiday always provides me with one of those. Um, but yeah, sometimes I look through like the ones that the students have, and I'll see all the notations and things that you guys write because I get a look at those. Um, so yeah, you're welcome to do that. Ultimately, you'll be doing, and I will be doing this as well in class beginning on Friday and the two ones next week, and the two the following week. I'll give you the official IB paper stuff. When you're doing that, you always like write in the, name, the number of the question on the left. Um, for my purposes, you'll just write your name up at the top so that I have that. In fact, I wrote down here on the board stuff that I had said before when you come in on Friday. And this is going to be an obligation for everyone, so even if you're gone, this is an obligation that I want you to do. Um, and you'll have all of the materials. You've got all of the materials now for paper one. So on Friday, I'll give you that. I'll tell you which one we're going to do, the 2018 or the 2019. You can prepare ahead of time between now and then just by going through and kind of familiarizing yourself kind of mentally. But there's one hour is enough time to do a sufficiently uh, successful job on paper one. Yeah, Jacob. Absolutely. You got the questions, and then you have like two pages of sources. Literally only four sources officially. Okay? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yep. And that's why I like, and I'm going to recap because some of you guys were gone. I'm going to recap as far as like how you probably want to divide up your time. The biggest chunk of time is going to be that little mini micro essay thing. Uh, which is the last question, okay? The other one's actually, I mean, we saw this last time. We can get, you can get through fairly quickly the first few questions. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that crazy hard. And so just a reminder, each of those are going to be 20 points that you come in on Friday next week. I decided to go ahead and, and focus your attention. When you come in on Wednesday, um, you'll have the materials, the sample questions, and so forth. But basically, go over your notes on paper two topic as in, 20th century wars, and I'm going to have you go back all the way to like 1890 and then go just to the cusp of World War II. So it'll include World War I, it'll also include the Irish War of Independence, the Russian Civil War, the Chinese Civil War, the Spanish Civil War. So just kind of familiarize yourself there because a lot of the paper two questions are like comparative type things. So like comparing that, you can pick among a variety of different things comparing like the Irish War of Independence to, you know, the Nigerian uh, Civil War and so forth. Okay, and then Friday we'll have it focused, in, um, excuse me, yeah, Friday is going to be focused then predominantly on the uh, Cold War period. Okay? Okay, let's have that. Anyway, yeah, just 20th century wars. Okay, I'll just put that, make that clear. 20th century wars. All right, Friday you'll focus on the Cold War question because uh, those are a little bit different as far as the kind of things that come up with those kinds of questions. Paper three, then, we'll, I'll give you a little bit more clarity as far as paper three the following week because um, those are going to have to do predominantly with the Americas. Okay? All right, so have that material in front of you. Um, the goal, of course, of this is to train you, get you uh, familiar, get you comfortable so that when you come in to the classrooms you're going to be doing for the IB history, I think you'll be in here twice, and one time you'll be in the choir room. That'll be set up and so forth. And yes, I will have the presidents covered. Sorry, Ms. Holliday's <laughs> insisting on that, so the presidents will be covered up. But I think pretty much everything else is okay, because uh, I don't think that's necessarily going to help you at all. Um, and so yeah, you'll be in here writing away, you know. <laughs> no, so we'll cover them all up. We're going to cover them all up. Yes, we'll use the Ashton method of covering up uh, presidents. But actually, it will be all of the presidents will be covered up. Okay? All right. Let's take a look at this. Um, just as a reminder to you, when you're doing like the first questions, you take about 12 minutes total on that, I think. And then the second question, about 10 minutes. And the third question, about 15 minutes. So you have about 20, 23 minutes or so to do that last little micro essay. Okay? 
a very good reminder of how much time you put into it. Everyone have the questions in front of you. You can have your little notes jotted down. Um, and I think you guys all had an opportunity to read through source Q. Okay? It tells you how many marks you're going to get on that. Three. So probably how many sentences are you going to put in there all together? No less than three, and really, you honestly don't need to be writing any much more on that because otherwise you're taking time away from the latter stuff, all right? So when it said, according to source Q, were Albanians portrayed, um, how, excuse me, according to source Q, were Albanians portrayed by Serbian propaganda? Just as a recap, uh, what were some of the uh, samples? Show of hands, or sh yes, Melody. Men were portrayed as violent to women. How many of you guys had that? Okay, that's pretty much. This is like reading comprehension. What was another one, Melody? And I'm repeating this because the microphone only picks up my voice, and I was told, so I will repeat all of your wonderful answers <laughs> for the viewers at home. Albanian women were portrayed as baby factories. How many of you guys had that as one of the things that you had? Okay, that's an easy one. Just jumps right out. What was another one you had? Albanians seen as genetically inferior. How many did you have that one ticked off on that one? All right, that's three already. Was there another one? Yeah, what was another one? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so gender stereotypes and so forth. Ashton, listen up because I'm trying to listen to everyone else's and so forth here. Probably the best approach is to pick the most obvious one. If you have to stretch it out a little bit, do that, but get the clearest answers because then the person grading it will go, oh, yeah, 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 three points, boom. You got the three marks right there, move on. Mm -hmm. This is where I want you to be very, very clear. The question says, how, according to source Q, were Albanians portrayed by Serbian propaganda? It gives you three marks. Part of your training from me tells you how many, how many examples should you give? Three. Yes. Yeah. You don't have to be too fancy. Yeah. Somebody, I think some people in the past are like, can we just use bullet points and so forth? Try and write complete sentences, but, I mean, they're pretty get in, get out type sentences. You don't have to write formal paragraphs or anything like that. Does that make sense? Does that help a little bit? Very straightforward. And that's why I think those numbers on the, on the far right, they tell you pretty much, except for the last essay part, the last question, it tells you probably how many sentences you need to write, at least, but really, no more than. Does that help? Because this is like, paper one is like, it's quick. Okay, yes, um, go for it, Quinn. Um, so you're writing your three answers. Um, do you have to use separate sentences for all of them or can they combine two of them? I would, you know, it's a good question. I would say for the, imagine your reader is just a little dull and a little tired and just sort of like, almost like a grading program. Give them three sentences. Make it easy for them, okay? Imagine, yeah, imagine they're a little dull, so make it easy for them. So they can go through and go, check, check, check. You got three out of three there, okay? Let's take a look at source R. If you haven't read that already, take the time to read source R. What does source R suggest about the perceptions of some Serbian high school students had of Albania? How many marks is that worth? How many sentences should you write? No more than two, really. No, I, I mean, at least two, but honestly, two sentences will do it. Okay, take a look at that. We'll give you a minute to look through source R if you haven't done so already. Some of you guys have already jotted it down. <laughs> this is crazy easy. <laughs> Two sentences about perceptions of Serbian high school students of Albanians. Ashton, do you have two written down already? Landon, do you have two written down? Good. 
Okay, when you finish, look up at me so that I know that you're ready. Because maybe... An exercise in understanding how to read a chart. You're already ready. Yeah. You ready, Tara? Okay. All right, so let's go ahead. Um, Tara, why don't you give me two um, examples about the perceptions of Serbian high school students of Albanians in the 1990, 1986 survey. Go for it. Give me two examples. Two answers, two sentences. Yeah, be very, 76%, yeah, in fact, I would just say that. 76% of students, Serbian students, consider them to be undeveloped, i.e. uncivilized. How many of you guys had that one? That's probably the easiest one because it jumps out. That's the biggest number. Okay, Tara, what's another one? <laughs> what do you think? Is aggressive bad? It can be. A perception, yeah, okay. So, in fact, that's, what it, that's basically what they're saying, the perceptions. Yeah, I mean, if you wanted to, I mean, how many sentences potentially could you write about that? Yeah, I mean, because 33% is a pretty significant thing that think that Albanians are argumentative, 36, insolent, introverted. I mean, yes, the danger of this is that you could spend, you know, a half an hour writing out, you know, 12 different sentences or something. How many sentences should you really write? Two. Pick, your, pick the best two. Get in, get out. Do you have any questions about 17B? Yeah. Yeah, you can, you can lump some of those in there. Yeah. No. Yeah. You could lump them in there. You could say... Uh, uh, an incredible 55% of the students uh, said that they dislike other students, and in addition, they uh, said that they're uh, sly, that is cunning or uh, deceitful. Yeah. I think that there's enough in there to easily get in, get out. Anybody see any difficulty with that particular question? You're dropping off? Okay. <laughs> This is, the, this is the beauty of like doing paper one training. As we go through, it's like, wow, that was easy. That was easy. All right, let's get to the next one, see how this goes. Let me just, let me just identify this because we're doing the training. Number 18, take a look at the question. With reference to origin, purpose, and content, analyze, let me explain how you're going to do this. Analyze the value and limitations of source S for historians studying the rise of ethnic tensions between Serbs and Kosovar Albanians during the 1990s. Worth four points, four marks. How many sentences probably need to be written then? Four. four. All right, now listen very carefully. All right, let me see if you guys have a suggestion as to how many examples of value you will be writing down. Raise your hand if you say just one example of value. Raise your hand if you think two examples of value. That is the correct answer. Two examples of value. Hold on. Raise your hand if you think just one limitation you're going to be writing a sentence about. Raise your hand. You're wrong again, Ashton. Raise your hand if you think it's two. It's a good thing we're going through this training. So then you're like, well, what about the origin and the, the purpose and the content? Those are the easy parts of the OPVL, right? Which is why I even leave out the C, because if you're talking about Serb attitudes and the situation and so forth, duh, you're talking about content, okay? The origin, who wrote it? Why did they write it? What is it about? Then the value. This is valuable because this person who is in such and such, we'll see what you guys come up with as far as your sentences. Are you ready? Question? How many values did you write about when you did your IA for like one of the uh, sources? A couple. Oh, there we go. That's good. 
How many limitations did you write about for like one of those sources in your uh, IA? At least a couple, yeah. You can come up with at least a couple. So we'll see what a couple people came up with. All right, so take a, take a couple of minutes here now. Um, on that one, that question, generally you've got like 10 minutes, but since we're just kind of identifying and, and marking, raise your hand actually if you're already kind of ready on that one. You finished up the, uh, the test soon enough and so forth. So we'll give you a few minutes to read through uh, source S. That's the one um, on the top of page 11 um, from Bosco, a Serb who moved out of Kosovo being interviewed by an American researcher. Read through that, and then you can just bullet point, okay? And we'll help you with the phrasing of the question, what are two values? What are two limitations? And then we'll give you the, uh, how, how you introduce those values and how you would introduce those limitations, okay? Go for it. The only difference between SL and HL basically is the HL does the paper three. The Americas, paper three. They just add that on. Yeah, so. Yeah, there's no difference in the content. HL is just more. You just have the America stuff thrown in there, which is why it really is very doable. That's just why we choose to do HL. It's easy to do it that way. Yeah. Okay. So give it a shot. Write up a couple of value sentences, a couple of limitation sentences, or at least bullet point kind of thing. Okay. After reading through source S, the police officer, and what he really thinks of Kosovar Albanians. Mm-hmm. After you've got it done, you can look up to show me that you're ready to go. Mm -hmm. That's fast. Jackson, are you ready?
some ideas for value, a couple of ideas for, okay. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, find out what you guys came up with for number 18. Um, just as a reminder to you, how much time when you're doing uh, paper one do you have to do this OPVL question? For this particular one? Yeah, I've actually, it's kind of confusing because in my training I've got it kind of written down a couple ways. Between 10 and 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So, how many of you guys think, I could probably wrap that up before 15 minutes for sure? Before maybe even 10 minutes, okay? All right. To make sure you're writing clear uh, sentences. One thing, and I had a notion of this as we go through, because um, you want to actually be very explicit. Part of your training, listen very carefully. Just as you were very explicit when you wrote your IA, the origin is, some of you guys left that part out, which is not too bad. The purpose is... The value of this source is, the limitations of this source is, use those words to help your dull grader to know exactly what you're talking about. I'm serious. I mean, you don't have to be like, you dumb son of a gun from wherever you are in the world. Maybe, anyway, just make it easy for them. It's almost like you're little, putting a little thing on here. And in fact, I would suggest, make a little note of this. This one's worth four. But I would suggest you can handle the origin and purpose and content in one introductory sentence. You think so? You want to give it a shot? What would be an introductory sentence that would include the origin, purpose, and content for this source S? You want to give it a shot, Jacob? Your source S? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because that's the one we're writing about. No. That's number 19. Just eight, number 18 is just the OPVL on source S. Okay. So, Where does this come from? Where is this coming from? This is from an American research. Source S, the, the origin of source S is an American researcher in 1995 interviewed interviewing, whatever, he interviewed a Serb police officer for the purpose of, yes, go ahead, Ellie, in, in order to find out his beliefs of the Albanian people in what context? The ethnic tensions between Kosovar Albanians and Serbs in the, in the 1990s. Yep, because this is all during that time period. If you do a, like a little one sentence blurb like that, you've covered origin, purpose, and then you've introduced your understanding of the content. Yes, Jackson. Yeah. And that's why, again, for the dull reader who's like, I wonder if I, this person is talking about the purpose. If you say something like, this um, source S originates from an American researcher who uh, had the purpose of gathering viewpoints from Serbs, including here, Bosco, a police officer who was sharing his views of the 1990s conflict between Albanian Kosovars and Serbs. Like we need to reference those things, like those, those three, because it just has to analyze the guy. I think you don't have to use the word content. I think if you're talking about the ethnic tensions in that time period, you don't have to use the word content. And then I think if you, it, you don't necessarily have to use the origin. If you want to, you can say this originated from, okay? The real meat, though, comes next. That's your next four sentences. And how many values are you going to talk about? And how many limitations are you going to talk about? And are you going to use the word value in each of those sentences? Yes, Mr. Hansen. Are you going to use the word limitation in each of those sentences? 
Do we have a volunteer to give us two lovely value sentences? Jack, you've been volunteered. For number 18. Use the word value. The value to historians, and that's a nice little thing, is that, go ahead. That time period, okay? Pause on that. Raise your hand if you had that, what Jack just talked about. The value to historians is that this is coming from somebody who was actually there. How many of you guys had that as one of the values? That's kind of an obvious one. He's got a first-hand perspective of what's going on. Check on that one. Well done. Give yourself a, all a pat on the back one. Rodrigo, did you have that one? You did not want He was there. He has an eyesight view of what was going on. That's a value. <laughs> okay, something similar. What do you have? I'm sorry, what? The obvious ones. Yeah, do you want to give another one? Okay, shh. Let's, I want to hear uh, from Ellie. Yep. He was there. He, it's his job allows him to get involved in the community and so forth. Right? He was from there. Um, how many years was he there? 32 years. Is that another value? Mary, how many values did you end up having? Two. Did anyone have any difficulty coming up with two values, two historians from this particular source? No. I think the fact that he was there, was an observer, was there for a long time period, he was in the midst of everything, he had a perspective of the, the, the government's point of view. Bingo. Use the word value in both of those sentences. Hello. Now, uh, Landon, yes. uh, give us, and include the word limitation to historian, give us one uh, limitation to historians of source S. One, one limitation from source S was that it was only one perspective of one historian. Okay. I like that. You guys like that one? Yeah. That he was only one perspective of somebody who was observing that? A limitation. Nice. You're not getting the big perspective of lots of the various different sources. That's a nice one. I like that one. Jackson, you got another one? I don't know. I kind of like Landon's, but the limitation is that like, it wasn't entire, like, he was just sharing his story. So yeah, it's basically what Landon said. It's one perspective. It's one perspective. He's sharing his story. Kind of, it it kind of leans into some other potential limitations. OK. Yeah, and then it affects his perspective. He's not getting lots of different perspectives. Tara, what's the limitation you saw? Very good. I like that one, too. It's specifically the perspective of just a, pers a police officer as opposed to a lot of uh, people who were, had other walks of life and so forth. Again, it's that this is just one person. Uh, Ashton. Okay. So because he had moved out, he doesn't have the perspective of being there. Could there also be, how many of you guys had kind of like a little bit of a bias thing going on there, maybe? Does he show a bias toward Albanian, Kosovar Albanians? Does that come out? Did any of you guys talk about uh, exaggerating birth rates? I mean, hello, how many births did he say the average Albanian woman was having? 10 to 15, where is he getting that information from? I mean, is he like spent time at a hospital? He's taking an accurate count of that and so forth, yes? Correct. It's not citing actual data. It's just sort of like his own perspective. Yes? The last paragraph, he isn't even sure about what he means. He says, I think. Yeah. It's very much a personal perspective. Um, yeah, Jack, one more. Yeah. He had to leave his home. 
So it's, it's happened a while back. So the interview, 1995, so it's still fresh. He had to leave. He was not happy. He was part of the minority and so forth. Raise your hand if you had difficulty coming up with at least two limitations from that particular source. Pretty easy peasy, huh? That was easy. Yeah, that was pretty easy. All right, let's get to number uh, 19. Compare and contrast what sources S, which you've already read through, so you're familiar with that one, and T reveal about the relations between Albanians and Serbs in Kosovo. This is worth six. So how many comparisons are you going to be writing down? Three similarities. How many contrast differences are you going to be writing down? Three. So this is literally just a six-sentence deal. Are you ready? Okay. I'm going to give you a little bit of a tips on this one and so forth. Uh, how many of you guys are actually ready to go on this one right now? Show of hands. How many of you guys would like a few minutes to uh, look over, particularly source T, to find out what it's saying and give a comparison? I think you'll like how this comes out, and I've got some tricks for you on how to do this if you don't see any obvious ones jumping out that are similar or obvious ones jump out that are different. You'll like what I've got to say to you after. Spend a couple of minutes on this one and just jot down three similarities, three differences. Okay? And then look up when you're ready. Bless you. And keep it simple. Look for simple similarities and simple differences. Probably the most tricky part is the little micro essay, but that just takes concentration. And you guys have written a lot of micro essays in your lifetime, I'm sure, at North Star at least. Enough. <laughs> yeah, enough. similarities, three differences. Let's get this what the paper's going to look like. It's going to have just the long line. So what were some of the similarities? Actually, that's a really good one. And you probably, if you say more reliable, you'll want to give an example as to why you reached that conclusion. Did you find three? Okay, all right. Did you find three similarities? What about three differences? You did? All right. You get three similarities. Yeah, see if you can come, stretch it out a little bit. See if you can come up with another couple of examples. 
Did you come up with a few similarities? Hostility. So something that you would have that would be in both. Make sure you have it in both. And then the difference is... Yeah, so things that are in both, okay, and then things that were different from one source to the other. Okay, let's go ahead and do our question number 19, compare and contrast. And the nice thing about this is it's like every single thing. Question number 19 is going to be compare and contrast between two sources. All right. Uh, let's start off with one comparison, a similarity. Ashton, you want to give us one of your similarities yes. and see if other people have this one too, between the two sources. Okay, so these are both perspectives of people who were there, one of whom was a police officer and another one who is, is a reporter. Does it say that the reporter was there? Not necessarily, okay. Give me another one of your similarities. And actually think really base level similarity. How many of you guys had that? They're both talking about the existence of hostilities between Kosovar Albanians and Serbs. You guys had that one? That's an easy one. That's kind of an obvious one. It's kind of like, wow, the content is kind of similar. Yes, Jackson. Another one is the population. So in the first one, the guy says that the Albanians only have like 10 to 15 children. And then the second one says there's a big Albanian population. Okay, so to keep that very, very basic and similar, I had that one written down too, and that one's come up a lot. How many of you guys had something having to do with the population? And you could keep it very, very basic as far as just both refer to population increases or population differences and so forth without having to get into like an analysis of which one's more reliable and so forth. They both talk about population. Rodrigo, what did you have? And you saw that in the first one, and you saw that in the second one. How many of you guys had that both had a reference to Serbs leaving for economic reasons? Nice, another good one. All right, that's already three, but let's keep going. Give me another one. Go ahead. Wait on the difference, but is there a similarity? How would you word it differently, the one on economics? Good point. You're both right. If you have as a similarity, a comparison, it in a generic sense, they're both talking about economics, that's one of your comparisons. Well done. Then you can come back in your differences and say, while they were both talking about economics, they differed in how they you know, saw the economics playing out or something like that. Does that make sense? So you're both right on that. I'd say with the similarity, sometimes you end up being a little bit more generic, and you're not talking about <coughs> real super specifics, but you're talking about this one talked about population. They both talked about population. They both talked about conflict. They both talked about economic reasons that had to do with uh, people leaving. Good. Okay. So therefore, both of them are talking about and the idea of Serbs feeling threatened and therefore wanting to leave. How many of you guys had something like that? Okay, that's a good one too. Yeah. Good. How many of you guys had that one? 
both of them were talking about independence and so forth. How many of you guys are like, three similarities was easy? At least three. And you try and I mean, keep them fairly simple. Think of topical. If they're talking about the same topic, even though they don't necessarily agree on the same conclusion, it's a similarity as far as just addressing that topic. All right, now let's get to the next one. Next, sometimes the contrast can be a little trickier, and I'm going to give you a, a strategy for how to handle this. We have a volunteer to give a, a, something that is a contrast, a dissimilarity between the two. Melody, you want to give us a contrast? Very good. I like this one. This gives you an example of what I'm talking about, how this is going to work out for you. One source talks about, what did you say? Economics focuses more on the economic situation. The other source talks more about the social situation. One talks about this. The other talks about something else. That's a difference. If something exists in one source, but it doesn't exist in the other, that's a difference. It's kind of a cheap way of doing a contrast, All right? We've got these people over here, but we don't have these people over here. Look, it's a contrast. So the absence of something could give you a nice, neat little example. What's another one? Okay, resolving the conflict depends on foreign policy as opposed to? They never talked about that in the other source. Good. Quinn. One talks about the anti-Serb movement, the other does, does not talk about it. I had, and this is from my like previous ones, uh, source S blames the Albanians, source T doesn't. T talks about government aggression on Albanians, source S doesn't. S is from the perspective of a Serb, T is from the perspective of a reporter. Do you guys feel pretty comfortable about that part? On your own, try out the uh, number 20. The key thing there is, and we're going to see this, uh, you guys are going to need to actually do this when we go into class on Friday, make sure you cite all four of those sources when you write a lovely, neat little micro essay on that. Okay? Does that make sense? All right, wipe her down, and then you guys are good to go. Well done. <laughs>